and welcome everybody and welcome to the big train world virtual train show and uh we appreciate everyone for joining tonight and it's the last of our train world uh, virtual series this week and uh, we had a great time had a bunch of great manufacturers um and we really enjoyed everyone tuning in we've had a huge amount of success tons of views so we we really appreciate everything and everyone joining us and uh my name is ken bianco jr from train world and we'll just uh go around the horn and introduce the panelists for tonight we are missing uh one person but hopefully they'll be on a little later today uh if not we'll give him some good old uh train grief afterwards but um so i'll kick it over to james wright how you doing james good kim great to be with you for night three of uh this train show and uh look forward to hearing from all the companies here i've seen and heard of all the products uh from all the companies but hope to see some surprises tonight for future releases so we'll see what's in store sounds good and uh we'll go around the horn and uh new time new time guest uh classic metalworks and uh let me unmic your your uh um, unmute your mic there how you guys doing we're doing good how you guys doing doing well all right not bad and uh, you guys make uh, some vehicles for N scale and HO and also O scale vehicles. So glad to have you. Um, how about Alex from Cato? How you doing, Alex? Pretty good. How you doing, Kim? Glad to be joining on day three, but day one for Cato here on the show. Uh, that's right. Usually we're uh, in Amherst right now and uh, freezing, but uh, uh, th th this will do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're glad to be here, Kim. All right, thanks for joining. And uh, we have Intermountain Railway. How we doing? Let me, uh, hold on, let me unmute you. Uh, Ron Angstead, how you doing? Uh, Intermountain President, and we're out in Colorado. Happy to join you all. Good to see you all here tonight. It's going to be fun. All right, thanks for joining us, Ron. And uh, we'll switch it over. Let me unmute Zach. How you doing, Zach? I'm great, Ken. Thank you very much for having us tonight. This is uh, I'm Zach Thompson. I'm the director of product marketing from Walters, and and we're kind of seeing you all, and, and we're very happy to have a chance to talk with all the rail fans and modelers that are out there. Should be a lot of fun. All right, thanks, Zach. And uh, we also have Jarrett from Atlas. How you doing, Jarrett? Hey, Kenny. Nice to be here tonight. Like you said, normally this would be the time I would be up in. Springfield, Massachusetts, freezing our butts off, but uh, you know it's nice to be uh, here in my my toasty little home, and uh, <laughs> you know be sharing uh, you know some uh, some uh, new products, new arrivals with everybody, and uh, just happy to be here tonight. Thanks a lot, Kim. Sounds good. Thanks, uh, Jarrett, and uh, Rapido Trains. Let me unmute you, Matt. Hold on. There you go. Hey, Ken. Hey, everyone. How you doing? All right. Matt. Good to be here south of the uh, uh, Canadian border, but uh, we're here. So <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good. And uh, yes, some people already noticed we are missing Broadway tonight, but hopefully uh, we could send a, a good old fax to Ken to, to join us tonight. <laughs> but um, we still have a great lineup for tonight, and we're really excited. Um, Throughout the week, we had a ton of new announcements from different manufacturers. So a lot of people really excited and tons of different scales. Um, and James, you mentioned uh, a lot from G scale too, uh, different scales, N scale, HO. Um, we had O scale last night. So a lot of different manufacturers, different scales, uh, lots of new product. And we're excited to uh, get another roundabout dose of of train footage tonight so uh thank you everybody for joining and we're going to uh kick it off with jarrett for tonight's episode so jarrett we'll kick it off to you great sounds good Jane. that's awesome uh so i'm going to share my screen with you we're going to jump right into atlas's 2021 uh new arrivals this is all locomotives uh 
freight cars, tracking accessories that have arrived uh, during the month of January and will be arriving uh, throughout February. So all uh, there's probably all in all there's probably four or five containers that we've had come in between uh, the beginning of December and uh, will be coming in February, chock filled with lots and lots of Atlas products for you Atlas fans out there. So I'm going to jump right in and share my screen and I'm going to hope that I don't have technical problems with sharing it. Let's see if you can see this. Can you just let me know? Perfect. Okay. All right. We got it. So like I said, this is the winter 2021 new arrivals catalog. And one of the first products that I want to highlight go to page four. It's the, we're doing this in both N and HO scale. It's the Atlas Master uh, 5800 uh, series plastic hopper. And this model, really unique model. Um, these, these are, you know, awesome, you know, lettered for great, uh, great names, BASF, Eastman, Tennessee, this Amico, um, got a Wells Fargo rail, uh, you know, very, you know, very, all very nice you know, new model, but the real highlight of this run is the uh, Christmas graffiti car that we announced, um, uh, you know, just, just a little bit ago. It came in, you know, for the holidays, uh, but for those of you that missed out on this model, there's going to be another shipment of these Christmas graffiti cars arriving in February. So if you missed out on it, uh, you can you can get these things again. We recreated the paint scheme that you can see here. It's a very festive holiday scheme with Santa Claus and Elf, Frosty the Snowman, and um, you know just there was a graffiti artist that had, that had some holiday spirit, and uh, you know they uh, uh, painted up this this train with uh, this graffiti. And um, these models are available in both N and HO, and the NCL is 2995, the HO scale is 4595. So this is a, uh, just a really cool model. Um, let me see if I can get back here. Okay, so moving on, I don't wanna just show you uh, just the models the whole time, we'll do a little camera switch to keep things interesting. So uh, moving on, I have another really unique model that was painted up with some very different paint schemes that I'd like to share with you. And let me just switch it back. So the first one, uh oh, here we go. First one I'm going to show you is the 25,500 gallon tank car in both N and HO scale. Um, this paint scheme, very unique. It's a Louisiana hot sauce logo on the side of this tank car. Um, contrary to what you might think, Kenny, it's not hot sauce that's inside this tank car, but it actually does carry the primary ingredient that's in hot sauce, that's vinegar. So it's 25,000 gallons of vinegar. This goes on a ride uh, down the rails and, you know, arrives at uh, you know, commercial kitchens, you know, um, salad dressing, you know, plants. Um, and it's just a more unique paint scheme. It's not something that you always see. You see a lot of you know, gray, black, you know, just you know, traditional, traditionally painted, you know, very plain paint schemes. This one has a you know, pretty cool logo on the side of it. Um, and also, after that, we did this kind of a unique paint scheme also on the side of this uh, 25,000 gallon tank car. Uh, there's also, you know, we have a theme going. Um, we are, uh, uh, this, this was a, a paint scheme on the side of a car that uh, Atlas's CEO, Paul Graff, actually took a picture of uh, while he was rail fan. You know, a lot of people in the industry are rail fans. They go out to the tracks. I mean, they, they go out there to take pictures of the trains. He took this great shot of this train, and there's actually Kung Fu fighters on the side of this train that someone did um, graffiti art of um, just you know a, a more unique uh, train. Um, these are going to be arriving in February. Uh, 
so definitely check out these uh, 25,500 gallon tank cars. We did them in O scale. Um, now we're doing an NFE show. They'll be arriving very soon. This is the original um, uh, picture that he took right here. Uh, it's, it's actually, it, this is the, uh, the prototype of the car that was awaiting delivery to a local hillside salad dressing factory. So that's kind of the behind the scenes of how that got created. Moving on, we're going to go to page eight of the arrival catalog and show you the new N scale GP20 locomotives. These locomotives uh, are available in the paint schemes that you see here Burlington Northern, Conrail, EMD Demonstrator, Santa Fe, Southern Pacific, and Union Pacific. These models are available uh, sound ready uh, along with sound. The silver sound ready models are 129 and the gold are 239.95. Uh, these come with literally all the bells and whistles. The 20 sound effects are available. Uh, there's a shutdown prime mover sounds, uh, the bell, the air horn, literally all the bells and whistles uh, that you uh, that you need that you can want so let me just make sure that i'm still live you guys can still still hear me am i uh, am i still coming through kenny yeah you're good all right cool sounds good all right moving on i'm going to take you guys show you Let's see. Yeah, and Jared, that Christmas hopper with the graffiti, I mean, people went crazy for that. So that, that was really popular and, um, you know, something that people in HO really haven't seen a lot of Christmas stuff for HO. So that was neat. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was extremely popular. We definitely, uh, you know, left some on the table with that. We just didn't know um, the, the demand. You know, the demand was a lot higher than we had actually supplied, so uh, that's why we came back with the with the second second run of it that'll be uh, arriving next month. But yeah, it's a it, it's a it's beautiful paint, and you know Atlas has always tried to recreate uh, you know a model based on what's out there. That that's our market. You know, if it existed, you know we 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 want to you know scale it down, paint it up just like uh, you know it was seen you know on the rails and. Uh, it was just a, a, a really cool car, and we're, we're going to keep with that theme. You know, any anything that's out there, um, you know, our, our guys, we've got lots of guys out there taking shots of of, uh, of trains all the time. And if it was out there and it's colorful and it's it's creative, you know, we're all about it. And, uh, you know, you guys, you know, customers seem to really like it, so we're going to continue. You know, the market, you know, dictates what, you know, what we make, just like all the manufacturers here you know, tonight. And people love it, so we're going to continue to bring that out. That's awesome. All right, I'm going to take us now. Let's see. I want to make sure I just share my screen here. Let's go. Okay. All right, next up, um, arriving, actually this arrives already, this is in dealer stores now, it's the Atlas Master HO 42 foot coil steel car. Really cool model. Um, we made these um, in two different body style versions. One um, is with the covered, um, you know, with, with the coverings. Um, and uh, there's also ones without the coverings. So, you know, you, and you can actually take the tops of them off and you can buy uh, coils that ride in the, uh, the middle of them. Um, pretty cool models. Uh, like I said, these are was, these all uh, delivered already to dealers. They are $41.95. Um, and um, yeah, just a really, uh, yeah, just a, a more unique model. Moving on, we're going to take a look at the HO-840Bs. Let's see what page this is on. 14. The 840B 
PW with 32 BHW locomotives. Um, we're doing a couple new paint schemes in the Dash 8s, the Albany and Eastern and CSX. We also have new road numbers in UP and Conrail and Santa Fe. And these are just very nice paint schemes here. We're doing uh, new paint on the Dash 840 BW, it's Providence and Worcester. And these favorites have new road numbers on Santa Fe, BNSF, Amtrak, and the Pepsi Can Amtrak scheme, which is a uh, favorite. And all of these models are actually, these just arrived. Um, I was just down at work today, and we had a container, it was a 40 foot container that arrived with lots of new products, and these were actually on the container. So look for these very soon from your local dealer. Um, yeah, just really beautiful models. So now. And Jared, on, on those uh, Dash 832s, I, I mean, the, the buzz on those are tremendous. And we, we actually had to stop taking pre-orders on, on some of those numbers because we were pretty much sold out. Uh, just really nice looking uh, paint schemes and a, a lot of interest in those. So I think the, uh, the market's going to be really excited to uh, see those coming in. Yeah, yeah, these are really beautiful models. And, uh, you know, again, it, you know, I think the market will really like them. You know, all of these are coming now in, in every scale that we make now. You know, you, you can get our uh, gold ESU sound. And ESU sounds amazing. You know, it, it really uh, it really captures, you know, the, the sounds of the actual you know, train, what it sounded like. The engineers are great. They put together a great sound package and, uh, you know, it really shines when it's inside the, the model and you have that on your layout and you're blaring the horn. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an outstanding model. So, um, yeah, just, just another really cool addition to Atlas's HO product line. So, uh, moving on, I'm going to segue into some O scale stuff now. The, um, uh, I don't know if you can see it behind me. I might have to change my camera, but behind me I have uh, our O scale troop sleepers. I'm going to try to switch up this camera that I just rigged up here. Let me see. Now, it's a little little dark, but I'll try to make it work. So it, it actually illustrates the point I was going to bring. Up. This um, this mo these models here are. Um, they're, uh, it's former, uh, former uh, weaver tooling that, that we bought uh, a number of years ago. And the, uh, the troop sleepers are really cool. The, 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 um, in, the, in 1943, uh, you know, during the wartime effort, the, the uh, US uh, Department of Transportation was trying to figure out how to move around all these troops during the wartime effort. And they contracted with the Pullman Company and uh, to build these troop sleepers. And what you can see is, I'm just going to take this camera and we'll see if you can see it along with me. Um, we actually recreated inside these things where the troops were actually sleeping. So hmm. this is, this is the car um, where the barracks were. They would sleep side by side i'm not sure if you guys are if it's coming across if you can see it or not but uh this is the troop sleeper where they actually slept and you know all these are illuminated um next we have the kitchen car and maybe you can make out inside there and see there's actually kitchen countertops and sinks inside there um there's different like prep stations, you know, so we recreated all the details that you would see actually inside these things. And this last one is the, uh, the medical uh, car, the medic car. And inside here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually a, there's actually a, like a quarantine area. Like if a, if a troop got sick, uh, you know, they would go in there and be quarantined. So, um, yeah, we just, we're, we just, you know, we just tried to recreate exactly what 
what what you would see on the on the real model, and that goes for the interior details also. And these models are available at uh, just around ninety nine ninety five, and they will be arriving just at the beginning of Q two. So you know we're talking March you know March April timeframe, just just right in there, and. Um, that is pretty much it that I have for the products that I wanted to show. I, I, I'll just you know mention that you know, to keep up with anything that's um, Atlas news related, to go to shop.atlasrr.com and sign up for our newsletter. And um, that's pretty much uh, everything that I had prepared you know, tonight, Kenny. And um, I'll just uh, turn it back to you or anybody else that has you know, questions. And, uh, and that's pretty much all I got tonight. All right. And wait, where's your daughter? No guest appearance? Where, where is my daughter? Where is she? <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Bye-bye. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> That's it. She's going to be the next superstar for Atlas uh, model trains. <laughs> That's right. She's, uh, she's going to be she's, she's the president. She's the future president of Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> very cool very cool very nice now we're, we're excited for uh all your new product coming in and uh where we uh, can't wait to get it in so uh very cool that's great thanks a lot Kenny. i appreciate being here tonight thank you for having me all right thanks Jared. appreciate it have a good night thanks thanks a lot Kenny. all right all right and that was Jarrett. And uh, Atlas has tons of HO and scale product and also um, uh, tons of track. I mean, people know Atlas uh, because of their track started out and, and now just uh, evolved into a huge uh, company who was uh, selling all different uh, scales and uh, I think even Z scale now with Flex Track. So um, great to have Jarrett on tonight. And uh, we're going to continue and we're going to add some more uh, Walther's Cruise tonight. Uh, let's see. All right. We'll do Zach and Dana. How you doing? Hey, Ken. All right. So we, who's going first? Well, uh, Ken, we need to get my, my other PC up if you can let that in the, the room. Um. That one it, it says device device is not connected. All right, I'll try a, a share screen and just see if that'll work. Okay. That one works. There we go. All right. Okay. Well, it's hard to follow. I don't have a I don't have a cute daughter, let alone a daughter at all. So, <laughs> <laughs> I you know we're kind of we're at a showstopper there, but. We'll give it a try. Um, so as I said at the beginning, I'm, I'm Zach Thompson. We're here from Walters and um, I'm here with Dana Koala. Dana is our, our product manager. And uh, we're very happy to kind of see everybody. I wish we could actually see you guys in person. It's like you said, it's Amherst time. I'm used to hanging out and talking trains at this point, but here we are. So, um, so we're gonna cover a couple of topics. We're gonna go over some new arrivals and some recent announcements with all that stuff mixed in. And first we're gonna lead off with the Walters National Model Railroad Build-Off. It's about to kick off. And I'd like to give a few highlights of what you can find at our official website, walters.com backslash NMRBO21, as you see it there. The submissions for the 2020 contest, they were absolutely amazing, um, which, you know, frankly, made the job of the judges very difficult to do, to say the least. But it's really kind of a cool thing, and it's a celebration of modeling in general. So I'm going to show you a couple examples. So these are our winners. These are champions from the 2020 series. And you can see that there's different categories for teams and adults and kids. And, and just, it was a lot of great work that was being done. And people were able to kind of follow along with this and see all the examples of great modeling that was going on as we went through the program. And really it's, like I said, it's a celebration of modeling and it's a way for us to kind of um, highlight the folks that are out there doing a lot of great work. Folks like the people that are watching right now today. So this year, we're going to see the return of the adult individual, the adult team, the youth class. And we're going to be introducing a new open class, too. Um, we're going to be bringing in some new second and third place awards. The prize pool itself is larger than it was last year. And um, the residents of the United States, for everybody except for Maryland, North Dakota, and Colorado, are eligible for those first three classes. 
it's just a legal thing. We wish we could get around it, but we can't. But the way that we're kind of compromising with that is to make this new open class. So the open class is available to residents of all 50 states. They're able to compete in the open category. And it's also available for uh, people that want to model N scale, HO scale, or O scale. So we really opened it up this year. So we're starting off on February 1st. That's when the contest begins. And at that point, people can order the starter bundles that are out there for the first three categories. Um, and then over the course of the next four months, the build is on. We'll start to see all sorts of creative modeling as these railroad scenes come together. And I'm sure that Ken and the guys at Train Land Train World will be able to help out with folks fleshing out their layout, getting all those detail pieces, um, you know, kind of getting the last flourishes that they need for their models. And then finally, the entries are due on May 30th with us picking the winners in mid-July. So we're going to be sharing all the progress with the community along the way. And we're actually pretty darn excited to, to see what comes up this year, because last year it was amazing. And that was just our first year doing it. This is the second year, and we're really looking forward to it. All right, Dana, I'll send it over to you. All right, thanks, Zach. Um, we're also really excited to announce the introduction of new Walders track components in codes 83 and 100. Um, this new track is newly designed and it's gonna give modelers uh, really the best possible foundation for their new layouts. Um, in addition to flex track, the Walders track line is also going to include a full range of code 100 and code 83 turnouts. And these offer several key features versus the older turnouts. These are gonna have one piece point and closure rails, um, which will provide better electrical conductivity. And they'll also look a lot more realistic, more like the real thing. Um, they have snap action switch points, so they can be used for manual operation right out of the box, or the spring can be really easily removed for use with a switch machine. Um, and they're also realistically detailed. Each tie has molded spike and tie plate details. Um, and all the new track and turnouts are completely compatible with, with the older original Walders track. So if you're adding on to a layout, you can just put this right into, into place. And right now, the Code 83 and Code 100 Flex Track is in stock now. And we know modelers have been waiting, especially those that are building layouts for the, the number four, number five, number six turnouts. And those Code 83 turnouts are actually going to be delivered next month. So those are on the way. And the other components, including number eight and number 10 turnouts, are going to be shipping throughout the spring. So again, we're really excited to be able to, to have this in stock and, and available for modelers. So. I'll just send it back to you, Zach, to talk about more recent arrivals. All right, so I don't mean to geek out, but we received this, this new car in December, mid-December, and it's probably one of my favorite cars that we have in Walter's Proto. It's a, it's a throw all door box car, and it's just such a really well-detailed model with all the separately applied parts. It's got all the, the latch bars and the, you know, the, the handles and things like that. It's, it's just, it adds a lot of depth to the model, and it adds a lot of interest to a consist as it's rolling through. Um, so this is available right now. This is actually in stock and and uh, it just came in about a month ago. Dana? Yeah, these cars are pretty good looking too. These are the new um, Scene Master Ford vehicles. These are HO scale. They're officially licensed by Ford. Um, these include a Ford Crown Victoria police interceptor as well as Expedition special service vehicles. They're highly detailed. They include interiors clear windows and separate rolling wheels. And both the Crown Vic and the Expedition are available in several unmarked and marked uh, police and emergency and fire schemes with or without non-operating light bars. Um, the Crown Victoria sells for $1,198. The Expeditions are $1,498 each. And these are in stock now. So back to you, Zach. So I'm gonna use that as a, as a magic segue into talking about some other Ford models. Um, we just announced the, the, the fact that we're bringing back the Walters Auto Series, and this is going to have some new tools in it. We're going to be returning some uh, long favorite tools that people have been looking for. And it's a great way to give modelers opportunity to model a very hugely important industry within America. Um, and where it's appropriate, the buildings, they'll have, they'll, they'll have Ford signage as well, and it's, it's fully licensed Ford signage. And also as part of the Auto Series, we're bringing back new runs of both the bi-level and the tri-level auto racks. Um, these cars are based on common prototypes that ran from the 70s until now. Um, these are highly detailed cars. They have factory applied grab irons. 
ladders and brake details. They also feature uh, metal Protomax couplers and the correct scale 33 inch diameter wheel sets. Both versions sell for $64.99. Uh, the buy levels, they'll be available next month in February with the tri levels coming in March. And another car that's supporting the auto series are these 50 foot Evans cushion coil cars. Um, each car features a removable hoods in three different styles as appropriate for the prototype. We have round hoods, angled hoods, and glass fiber hoods. Each car features etched metal walkways, separate grab irons and other details, correct scale 36 inch diameter wheels, and metal Protomax knuckle couplers. These are Walder's proto cars, so they're really you know, decked out to the max. Um, these cars as well, we have separate coil loads available for those that wish to add them. And the cars sell for $59.98 each. In addition, we're also offering an undecorated kit for the glass fiber hoods for anybody that wants to, to make their own custom hoods. And these are available as a two pack for $14.98 each. And expected delivery for both the cars and the hoods is August of uh, 21. Now, next, we'll take a look at some of the structures that are in the auto series, as Zach had mentioned. Um, first up, we have the stamping plant. This is an all new structure model, and it includes both the plant building, the office, and the substation. It retails for $69.98, and the delivery for this one is expected in April 2021. Below that, we have an automobile transloading terminal. And this includes two loading and unloading ramps. It includes a guardhouse and gate, a chain link fence. This is a real versatile kit because you could use it on its own for a scene, or you could also add it to one of the other auto structures to, to make a bigger facility. Um, the MSRP for this one is uh, $59.98, and it's going to be here in March of 21. Following that, we have the tire plant. This is a brick curtain wall building which fits a wide variety of eras from the 1920s to the present. The structure has a rail dock and it also has the big prominent carbon black silo in front. So you can really tell what it is. Um, the expected delivery for this one is February of 21 with an MSRP of $79.98. And below that, we have the Ford Central Office Building. Um, this is based on an actual building that Ford operated in Dearborn, Michigan. They built it in the 1920s and used it until the late 90s. Um, even if you don't model the auto industry, the structure, it's, it, it would make a great hospital, a school, or even any other large urban structure. So it's a versatile kit. Um, expected delivery is March of 21, and the MSRP is $64.98. And in addition, the, the last structure, as you saw in the uh, slide when Zach introduced the series, we're also offering the assembly plant in the auto series. And uh, that one is expected to be here in April of 21 and its MSRP is $89.98. All right, so um, first off, I'm, I'm loving the comments that are coming in here, Ken. This is this is really a cool <laughs> setup that you have. Um, so yeah, on a lot of people love our, our Jeep 9. Well, I'm, I'm glad, I, I think we're all glad that we got so many great fans out there. Um, so talking about this Proto Jeep 9, this is, a, this is a project that we've been working on for a very long time. We're excited to finally announce it. This is Jeep 9 Phase 2 locomotive. Um, and what we did is we tooled this up with the, the main spotting features for Phase 2. There's a louver pattern on the side that's telltale for Phase 2 versions of this locomotive. And then also, and I'm, I think I can actually see there's a cursor that you guys can see on here, right? Um, the other one of the other key spotting uh, features that you have, and it's, it's on some in this release and not on others. It's on the, um, the Norfolk Western, the PC, and the Sioux. Is you've got a slightly different sill arrangement. Where on the CP rail, you see the normal sill arrangement with the um, the fuel filler uh, right in this spot, kind of closer to the middle. On the N and W, you see it's closer to the front of the locomotive or the short hood of the locomotive, depending upon how they operated it. Um, so those are a couple of the key spotting features that make it a Phase Two locomotive. Um, we've got six different, uh, paint schemes that are on this release. And with those six different paint schemes, they each have their own road specific features. So that includes a lot of different types of spark arresters. There's, there's the non-lifting and there's a super non-lifting and then Norfolk and Western has their own style. Um, there's all sorts of different headlight types 
And you've got the Western Column Beacon that you can see there on the UP units. So they've all got a little bit something different, which is kind of fun because otherwise the Jeep 9s are kind of this plain Jane locomotive. So we've taken care to, to tool up all the different detail features that you need to make them look like the real thing, even though they're, they're all very a standard locomotive that's out there. Um, one thing I will mention too, all the, all the Walters Proto locomotives, they all come with the same pulling power, the same mechanism uh, in them. So every, every Proto locomotive that you got has a very high powered pulling mechanism with a lot of torque. So these are also gonna be coming out um, in the summer in June, and they've got an undecorated unit as well too that I've got to mention. It comes with something like 30 different detail parts. Don't quote me on that, but it's a ton. It's a ton. It's gonna be this huge couple bags that are in the, the undecorated unit. Um, so it's a really good value too. So they're gonna be available both in standard DC and DCC, and they're coming back out in the summer, I think June, 2021. Back to you, Dana. Yeah, Zach, before you go for sorry, Dana, to cut you no off. No worries. That CP uh, pain scheme is really nice. What do you think about that, James? Oh, beautiful. And Walders, they were talking about the mechanism. You know, Walders, I've got some of my oldest locomotives that still have no issues. They run like a Swiss watch. Um, I haven't had any, like, warranty repairs or anything. Their, um, their motors are just uh, excellent. So very smooth runners. Slow speed control is great, and, uh, you know, it's what you expect from Walder's Proto, but just wanted to make a point that uh, they don't give me any trouble at all. Cool. Thanks, Thanks James. James. Glad to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's, I mean, that's the whole point, right? We want people to just be able to enjoy their trains and not have to worry about them running well. So I'm glad to hear that. All right, I will fast forward here, Dana. Okay. We'll get you back to where you need to be. Oh, no, that's... That's fine. And here, yeah, not to leave out Walder's main line. Um, we have another run of the Walder's main line 57 foot mechanical reefers. Um, these cars, the last run sold out really quickly for us. Um, they're based on PCNF cars that were built in the late 60s and I think they were in service into the 2000s. Um, these cars also feature either Keystone or Hydrocushion underframes as appropriate for the prototype. Nine foot Youngstown plug doors which have separate latch detail, a Stanray peaked roof with a capped exhaust stack, and uh, a whole bunch of other prototypical details. Um, the cars ride on 70-ton roller bearing trucks. Again, they have the correct 33-inch scale metal wheels. They also include Protomax metal knuckle couplers. Um, they're available in three, three numbers each of seven paint schemes, and the reefers have an expected delivery of April 21 and an MSRP of 31.98. So back to you, Zach. Okay. Finally, the last, last thing we've got to announce here today, we've got some new end scale structures that we're announcing at Cornerstone. Um, and first off, we've got the Metalhead Barn and Silo Kit. It comes with both. And then we've got the Lancaster Farmhouse Kit. Um, you can see them both built up here. These things are perfect for any era from you know the 20th century on. If, you, if you're we're in Wisconsin here, you can drive anywhere outside of a city in Wisconsin, and this is what you see. So they're fantastic new models uh, that cover really uh, wide era range. And they're going to be available next month, actually. So that is our presentation, Ken. I will stop sharing. Thank you guys very much for your time. Thank you. Um, Zach and Dana, do you guys think you could possibly come up with a few more things? There wasn't very many listed there. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll, we'll try to cover more categories next time. Yeah, really. No, a great, great lineup of items. And, and I saw some comments. Uh, Dana, you're with the Walders team now, and it's good to see I you. Am. Yeah, Thanks thank you. A great asset. I was talking to Zach uh, pre-show, and I think uh, think they made the right move there. And I'm I'm sure you get, you're already making waves uh, and uh, making great change and and great improvements over there at Walders. So it's good to see you. <laughs> there, there's not much need for improvement there, James, but it's a yeah. lot of fun. Well, you know, there's always new products. There's always new products. I'm sure you got your hand in that yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yep. And uh, so it's good to see you over there with the Walders team. A lot of great products, you know, just seeing all the Walders structures, which at some point I'll get to putting on, on a layout if I can find a house first. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll be able to, we'll be able to uh, take a look at more Walders products and, and especially the structures because they're just so finely detailed. And then, able to, you're able to acquire the, you know, Ford licensing, UPS licensing, 
so we can actually use um, licensed products on our layout is very neat as well. So thanks for your time, guys. Well, Thank we you. appreciate it. And that, like I said before, we would just really like to have a chance to talk with the audience and we miss it. We miss it a lot. So, so thank yeah. you very much. Looks like Milwaukee will be the first big show. I hope so. <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe. It's yep. been real. It's been really weird to have a year with no train shows. So yep. it's, yeah, it's been kind of a bummer. Yep. Well, uh, thanks for your time guys. I'll kick it back over to Ken so he can, cause I'm not sure who's the lineup is next there. Very good guys. Thank you, Walters. Appreciate it. And uh, we're going to uh, take it over now um, to let's do uh, Rapido and let me invite Bobby on. And uh, so we got Bobby and Matt. I'm not sure which one of you guys want to uh, go and uh, talk first. <laughs> well, uh, Ken. Thanks for having us. Uh, like uh, the other presenters have said, you know, it's uh, uh, good to be here, good to talk with everybody. And uh, uh, I think everybody's sort of missing the show aspect of it. You know, it's one of those things you're at the show and and uh, you never know if you want to go do another show again. But uh, whenever they dry up, you miss them. <laughs> exactly. so, uh, and, and I just want to let both of you guys know that every manufacturer wanted to know if Jason was going to be on because he would take up the whole show. <laughs> no, that's why they had to send two of us. Yeah. <laughs> Very so, good. Um, I'm going to uh, talk about um, the one of the latest announcements that uh, we announced there towards the end of December, and then I'm going to hand it off to Bobby. Um, and I'm going to first talk about the E8s that were announced on uh, Christmas Day. So um, I will be sharing the screen. And nope, screen. There we go. All right. So. Um, this is one of the uh, first renders of the E8, and uh, this exploded uh, rendering just shows all the different variations that we're doing with this. Um, this uh, uh, we scanned a prototype of this out in um, uh, Southern California, one of the UP union, units that was out at the um, Orange Empire Railway Museum. They've since renamed it, and I. The name escapes me right now, but we have done a 3D scan of this. So this is the first E8 that has the uh, prototypical uh, accurate uh, hood contours and nose contours because it's been scanned off of an actual prototype. And that's one of the things that uh, Rapido likes to do whenever we can get available to a prototype with these contours like this is we like to do a 3D scan of it just to make it as accurate as possible. Um, up until some of this technology has existed, you know, it's it's been a very close and models out there are, are very good looking, but now we can say that these are uh, accurate to the prototype, the, the hood and the nose contours and everything like that. Um, but what this uh, exploded diagram here is showing is just all the different detail variations that we're doing on this. This is one of uh, the most accurate E8 models that will be on market. We've got all the different porthole configurations, uh, you know, portholes down the whole side, just the front, or no portholes. We've got the different steam generator hatches uh, on the rear of the locomotive body. We've got the different dynamics. We've got the different sand fills. We've got the different headlight, uh, the nose and the door, and then the different pilot. Um, so just numerous variations, numerous differences uh, to be one of the most accurate E8 models on the market. Um, that's HO, right, Matt? And yes, this is in HO. Gotcha. Um, one of the other renders that I wanted to show is the underframe. Um, along with all of the detail on the outside, uh, the underframe, uh, I, I geek out at some of this stuff, but the underframe is just as impressive because this whole section right here in the, that's in the pastel green now is all of the zinc alloy frame. So this locomotive is going to have plenty of pulling power and especially whenever you MU multiple units it should be able to pull just about any passenger train that you 
may have uh, that you need to consist. Um, let's see, some of the uh, other renderings that we have of the locomotive, um, just to uh, uh, show how these are going to be coming, this is uh, one of the Amtrak units. <clears throat> Um, and these are still initial 3D renderings. There have been refinements made to these or going to be made to these uh, to just make sure that they're as accurate as possible. Uh, here is one of the Erie Lackawanna units. Um, with uh, the multiple nose headlights and everything like that. Um, uh, different from the Amtrak unit, of course. And then uh, different roof shots uh, to show uh, the winterization hatches, the different um, steam generator hatch details, um, just numerous, numerous variations on these E8s. Now, Matt, uh, you know, you a, to get this, these renderings, don't you guys have like a 3D scan process you go through? So, uh, to get the actual renderings so like the um um uh 3d that i showed earlier these 3ds we can take this with uh the software that we have and we can spit out uh these images here to get these nice images because these images are actually based on that 3d cad the uh 3d scan of the actual prototype is uh what is done uh it's a it's a laser uh, that goes over the uh, whatever you're measuring, in this case the locomotives, and then uh, the engineering team takes the feedback from those laser dimensions and then creates the 3D out of that. So um, it's, it's a multi-step process. Uh, the 3D from the laser scan is then scaled down to HO, and then these renderings are spit out and then uh, continue to be refined. So. But it makes it like one of the most accurate ways to really measure a locomotive, correct? Exactly, exactly, especially on these complex contours. So, um, but here we have the uh, Pennsylvania unit uh, showing the train phone antennas, um, just one of the key spotting features on the Penzi units, and, and I think it's just a really cool feature on these, so definitely can tell that that's a Penzi locomotive. And then uh, rear views, you know, you've got the rear lights on the back. Uh, you've got the grabs going up the side for roof access. Um, and again, the Penzi units have yet another steam generator hatch variation and then the portholes down the side. So uh, very detailed, uh, very road specific. Um, uh, and uh, so far have been very well received. Um, I know that they're... Um, were some uh, changes that were made not long after the announcement, um, like we added uh, more Union Pacific B units to the uh, uh, pre-order availability, because a lot of the times the UP, uh, the name trains, or um, uh, just UP trains in general, uh, passenger trains, uh, whenever they would run the equipment, it would always be one A unit and multiple B units. And a lot of modelers let us know that, hey, uh, uh, can you make more than one B unit available for the UP unit? So that's how the multiple B units came about for um, uh, pre-order. So now it should be one A unit, an A and a B unit, and then two single B units are available uh, for pre-order on these guys. Yeah, and Matt, I think you, you forgot the, the biggest thing about these units, the 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 other the original uh, I guess the, the Amtrak version the black paint scheme that you guys came out with you sold out 500 pieces in like three days I mean that's that's insane it, it's incredible and everybody was like up over arms over it because it was it was like they, they you posted it it was a beautiful looking engine and a lot of people didn't have a chance but thankfully you guys were able to reopen it up. Uh, to let other people get a chance for it, but it, it was insane the uh, the frenzy that you got everyone into. <laughs> yeah, that one uh, took everybody by surprise. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, James, were you able to to grab one in the first three days, or were were you able to get it through the second batch? Uh, I'm gonna have to wait for what's up my alley, which is the E nines. If they do them, I'm pretty sure they will. <laughs> um, but the Union Pacific Excursion E nines, I didn't even know about the announcement. I had viewers messaging me asking if the if they were gonna be doing the U, uh, the Union Pacific E nines, and I said, "Rapido, what are you talking about?" And then I had to go catch up with the announcement uh, that they had announced the E8. So we hope to see that in the future, but I'll probably get an E8 just to show everybody because it's, um, you know, it's generated a lot of buzz as Rapido does um, with almost everything they come out with. Well, one thing I'd like to highlight, uh, and that goes on what you're saying, James, is uh, don't forget one more thing that we have that we've actually 3D scanned is the PA Welcome up the PA and the PAB. Um, that order deadline will be closing out in March. Um, I'll open it up and share screen here. So we're following right behind the. Um, Yeah, James, the, uh, there we go. the you got it? Yeah, the share screen thing went kind of funky on me. Uh, <laughs> Are you guys releasing the the one you scanned out there, Doyle McCormick's uh, Nickel Park one? Uh, um, we scanned the, um, it was the next Santa Fe, became DNH, and then it went to, um, Doral McCormick, and he's he repainted into uh, nickel plate. So that was the one we scanned. Now, granted, the one we did scan did have a lot of differences from the actual production models. So there was a lot of compromise into it. But um, yeah, something's there. You go. So one thing I'll notice is that the rivets and the bolts are not on here. That's something that they'll put on at the last minute on the bolts. That's so we can get everything adjusted to everything on the car body first. So you'll notice here it's got the uh, the correct AQT shoe, um, all the paneling. Now let's, let's jump put it around for me. Hold on. Now, Bobby, there you go. So you one of the parts PA you can see here, oh, that's for later. PA that, uh, or before that was the PAs that you guys are coming out with, right? Yeah. Wait, can you repeat that again? I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear what you said. Those, these are the brand new PAs that uh, in HO scale that you guys are coming out with. Yes, yeah. Okay. These will be headed to, I think March 15th is the deadline on them for pre-ordering. Once we hit that phase, then I'll start heading into production. So now granted, uh, the Chinese New Year starts in a couple of weeks, so once that's over, the E8s will go. Will start heading into production. Following that, once we get that wrapped up, sometime maybe a couple of weeks after we get the uh, the pre-orders in, we'll start working on the the PA locomotives. Now here's a, a good view of the trucks. Now one thing I like to highlight is all of the piping. Check out all the piping on the underside of the body near the frame. So if you notice a lot of truck details and then all the extra piping, something that has not been replicated before. Uh, and so now leading in from that, talking about deadlines, um, I know a couple of days ago you were talking to Jordan and Bill, uh, and I know you were talking about a lot of the E8 features and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to mention about the February 15th deadlines. They'll be the Bud Manor sleepers and the Bud baggage forms. And then March 15th, uh, we'll have the PA and the PABs, as well as the X72 boxcar and the GLA hoppers. And coming up 
probably before a couple of weeks, we're going to have the M420 locomotives, the MLW M420 locomotives will be arriving at the warehouse. And I'm not 100% sure if it's before or after. The modernized FL9s will all be arriving. And so let me pull up that screen. Now, bear with me, my camera broke, so I'm using a different laptop, so this is painfully slow right now. Um, yeah, so that's why Matt went up before without me. My laptop camera broke two minutes before it was starting. I It worked five minutes before it started, and then tested that one more time, and the, lock, and then the camera broke. So go figure. We're never going to hear the end of this from Jason. It's thrown off, so if I'm, you can let me have it later. But uh, but while, while you try to figure that out, sharing, let me uh, share my screen on this, uh, the black uh, paint scheme, the 4316 cam track. And uh, we still have a little room on these, but this was a monster announcement by Rapido HO. Um, I don't know why James is sleeping on this because everybody has been jumping on the, the bandwagon on this one. So uh, definitely stay tuned for that. But, Man, uh, there's so much coming out, I can't keep up. It's, uh, <laughs> and, then, and then it'll be two or three years later, and I'm like, where was I? Yeah. <laughs> So, for East of Hudson commuter modelers, we have the modernized up online. So, you'll, you'll notice here, Metro North. I also have it. You're probably not going to see me, but I have a sample here. In fact, I'm supposed to shoot the video for it tomorrow or this weekend. Um, with that Metro North Condot. Okay, this is not going in order. Okay, see, this is exactly what happens when, you're, when your camera breaks. You, you, Everything's out of order. But there's the E8 again. Um, But uh, we have Condot, Metro North, uh, New Metro North when they painted two and two New, uh, New York Central, and um, a few others as well. But all that is coming within the next couple of weeks. Once we get that in, be a little bit, but before the next couple of shipments. But we also have some new announcements coming up in the next newsletter. So if everybody's not subscribed to the newsletter, I advise everybody to subscribe to the newsletter off the website. And that way you can stay up to date on all the news and all the new products, deadlines. And like I said, we have a, a few new announcements coming up, brand new, new tooling, both scales, H, O, and N, and maybe a couple more N scale stuff later in the summer too, before too long. Well, that sounds good. And hopefully you guys don't announce it on a holiday and uh, we could all get our uh, orders in on time. <laughs> well, believe it or not, you know, a funny story about that. Um, we announced it on Christmas Day, and I always I write all the newsletters now, so I had wrote, written a newsletter, had it set up, sent it out, everything ready the day before, and I happened to check a few things, and someone mentioned to me that I think the um, EHs are – at a certain percent sold out. So then I asked Jordan, I said, um, what is it at right now? And he's like, it was around three o'clock Christmas day. He goes, oh, the E8s are at 6% sold out, or the Amtrak one. And by the next morning, I think it was the 26th, by 8 a.m. to 26, completely sold out. So it took us maybe 36 hours to sell the whole thing out. Crazy, very good. Everybody's got to up production numbers. It's hard to hard to get a hold of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was a. Uh, it shouldn't be surprising. It was a little bit surprising, but I mean, it's it's just it's amazing. It's it's really good. It's in a good direction, and it's a project that can last us for many years. And you know that's the big thing about it. There's just so many different paint schemes, variations, and as Matt was saying. There's just so much stuff you can do with the whole thing that it, it'll last us for, you know, a good 10, 15 years. And I keep seeing the messages pop up from people about the uh, Horizon cars and how good they did. And that's something that we'll have to look at doing down the road again, too, but maybe not too long from now. Because uh, I do believe that 
most of the phases sold out pretty fast, and it's you can't really find anything or anything right now. It's only been about three, four weeks since we uh, we shipped them. So stuff to look forward to. Uh, you'll just have to. Everybody will just have to keep an eye on the newsletter and anything that we announce. All right. Well, thank you very much, Matt and Bobby from Rapido Trains. Really appreciate it, and uh, we'll we'll stay tuned on the lookout for even more models than you're already uh, coming out with because the the lineup's uh, tremendous. So appreciate you two, and um, we'll kick it over. Uh, we'll we'll go a little. Uh, uh, actually, I was going to say N scale, but N scale and H O. We'll uh, switch it over to Alex from uh, Cato USA. How you doing, Alex? Oh, let me good sorry no problem how you doing good how you doing Ken? all we right appreciate, we appreciate uh, i know it's been said many times before but we do appreciate you having us on and you know again with us not doing shows this year and seemingly you know probably until november when we get to have the next one we do appreciate you guys actually doing this uh you and james both you know it's kind of nice for us as manufacturers and all and, uh, and all of our customers to be able to at least look at some of the new products and some of the new announcements that we have. So we appreciate you doing this. Oh, thank you for joining us. Yep. So, okay. So I'm going to go over probably three new announcements that we have between November and this month in January. And then I want to briefly mention a couple of things um, that we do have in stock that we're um, still selling now. Um, so the first thing I want to mention uh, is back in November, we announced, and I'm going to share my screen here in just a second. We announced, this is going to be our first production run of it. Uh, we announced the GS4 uh, in a post-war black paint scheme. So I'm going to show you this right now. This is our first time doing this paint scheme. Now I'm going to show you the announcement first, and I'll show you uh, some pictures here. So this is the announcement for us. So this is going to be the GS4 post-war black. So I, what I have here is a reference. So during World War II and prior, the Southern Pacific actually had a Southern Pacific Lines paint scheme, which is basically just as you see here is in smaller font, usually at the top, uh, Southern Pacific Lines. So after World War II, there were some GS4s that were painted in this all black paint scheme, but it has the big thick uh, th uh, Southern Pacific on there. And I'll uh, show you another picture of it here in a little bit that kind of has um, some more details on it. But the provisional pre-order for it went really well, so we are going to be manufacturing this. Um, this is going to be available um, later this year, um, and the retail on it for this is going to be two forty. Um, the post-war black with ESU Loke Sound. This is still to be determined, uh, but this is going to be the tentative price for it. And I'm going to really quickly. Um, show you some pictures of it or at least one picture of it. i don't have the complete model yet but i'll at least show you the concept art for it this is available on our website too for anyone that wants to actually see this but this is going to this is the concept art for the post-war gs4 black um again available later this year um so this is post 1946 to probably 1950 from what i was told so uh, along with this, that's going to be coming uh, a little later. We are going to be doing another run. Yeah, we are going to be doing another one of the Southern Pacific Daylights. Um, this is going to be in the Southern Pacific line. So this is going to be an early um, Southern Pacific paint scheme for the locomotive. So during the war and pre-war, uh, this will be available again in a 10-car set and two-car add-on. Uh, we're anticipating this probably to be around the November, December time frame for delivery. We haven't announced this yet, so this is something brand new uh, that uh, I'm telling you here. Um, and again, this is going to be available uh, later this year. And this will also be available with the issue Loke Sound, which is the first time that we've offered it from from the factory uh, with pre-installed issue Loke Sound. Very nice. Uh, and another thing too, like these GS4s have been one of the best sellers for us. I mean, we first started manufacturing this locomotive in 2008. Uh, and since then, uh, the sales for this have just exploded. I mean, we have so many people that know that this locomotive is one of the most popular ones that we have out there. Of course, this pulls Southern Pacific Daylight. Uh, this is one of our most popular models that we have. So something new that uh, some of you 
or at least some of the modelers may have seen uh, from our announcement this month. And that is our announcement. Again, this is not a new concept, but this is new for Kato, at least in, in, in this sense here. I don't know why this is doing that. So I will try it again. There we go. Should be better. Kato USA is going to be releasing a flexible track. So obviously all, all, all the models out there know about Pico and obviously Atlas. You know, this is not, again, like I said, not a new concept. But we are going to be, and Japan has had this for quite some time. But we are going to be releasing a flexible piece of track, very similar to what's out there already. Uh, and this is still code 80, so this is still um, the same code as all Cotter track. Uh, and I have some pictures here, or at least for, for this announcement. Along with this, we're going to be releasing some cork bed, which uh, I'll show you here in, in some pictures here in a little bit. Along with some mounting nails and a terminal joiner to go along with it. And of course, the individual joiners as well. Uh, this information is going to be found on our website soon, uh, so it's not quite available yet to take a look for all the uh, for all the customers going to our website, but it will be up shortly. Um, and again, there, I saw in the past that there are some rumors going around on some of the Facebook chats that this is actually Atlas Track that we import. This is not. This is actually Kato Flex Track that they have had in Japan um, selling for a while. So this is our for this is Kato USA's first time actually selling it here in the United States. So I'm going to show you kind of some. I'm going to show you some pictures, a little bit of details about how this works, or at least how it looks, at least from this sense. So, Kato has an Atlas, uh, an Atlas conversion piece. So, what this basically is, and we, we've had this on the market for quite some time, but this is a little piece of our uh, unit track. So, over here, we of course have our signature uh, unit joiners. And then on the other end here, actually, let me see it real quick. Sorry, there's a lot of pictures here. This is a picture of our, oops. This is a quick picture of what the uh, conversion piece looks like. So it has, again, our unit joiner here. And this is a piece that can connect to Atlas Flex Track or really any type of uh, individual piece of track that's not um, connected to any type of road bed. Uh, so let's see, as you can see here, Oops. I do have this connected here. So it, it, it does uh, mount very well. The cork, um, when it is on there with the track, it is the same exact height as our uh, Kata track. So in the, I guess in the early stages of questions that we've been having with this product is, will it line up with the existing Kata Unit track? And the answer is yes. As long as you have the uh, cork bed below it, it will match up pretty much exactly. And again, with, with the joiners, you can connect it here, uh, and then that would mount straight to the uh, connector piece here. Now, another option that modelers have too is you can obviously just take the joiners off of this section, and you can just add the individual metal joiners that are um, available separately, um, or you can just use the joiners, like our own unit you know, joiners that are on here already with this. Uh, the fit isn't really that tight. Uh, from my quick little experience with it. So I'd probably recommend if you are going to use a piece of track that is not this adapter piece for Atlas, I'd probably just take this joiner off and put the um, individual joiners that we have for, for, for these flex tracks. Um, these are going to be available, we're looking at right now, mid-summer of this year. Um, so for those of you that, and again, we've had some pretty good excitement about it. Um, we are looking forward to having it again. This is, I guess, Kato's first um, flex at having flex track. Uh, so we are looking forward to seeing how this is um, going to go over. It has been pretty popular so far. We have gotten quite a bit of pre-orders for it. Uh, and this will be available uh, in the mass market. So if anybody is looking to get it, looking to integrate um, some of this flex track in their layout, that is Kato, um, they'll be able to. Again, like I said, this is code 80. This is still the... Uh, Nickel, nickel silver rails that we have always had. Um, so this is one of the new excitements that we've had. Um, one more thing I'd like to show you guys today. And this was just announced. Um, I think it was this month. We we're coming out with, and this is the N-Scale Pocket Line Series Steeple Cab Electric Locomotive. 
something a little unique and different that we have had uh, from the past. So this locomotive is actually still used today, or at least a, a similarity of it on the Iowa track on uh, the Iowa uh, Traction Railway. This is a 1920s type locomotive. Um, one of the main things that we've been trying to look at are locomotives that can go around. We do have a unit tram set, which is basically a piece of street track uh, that modelers can use to integrate like within a city or things like that. So these type of locomotives are going to be perfect for a, for a lot of those smaller um, type layouts. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that we get phone calls from all the time that have really tight curves, maybe seven inches or six inches. This is the, this is the type of locomotive that's going to be able to fit uh, around those curves and go around those curves. As many people know that, you know, larger locomotives don't go around those tight curves. So this is going to retail for $45. It is a very competitive price for this type of engine, although it is small. And I do have uh, a quick little sample of it here. So it is going to have the knuckle couplers on it. It's going to have a work, well, uh, a, at least a flexible pantograph, as you see here. Uh, but it will be painted in this orange color that you see here. And I actually have kind of a better picture of it than what that one was. Yeah, bring it up. Weren't you just showing it, Alex, by hand? Oh, this right here? Yeah. Very but this cool. is uh, this uh, picture here will give you a little more uh, better example of the of the paint scheme here. So it is going to be like a bright orange, almost like a daylight orange color. And, and this will be a Cotto trash. It's not going to be a specific railroad uh, that we have to it. Uh, and then this is an example that I found, well, well, that we have in our R&D file, but this is what the Iowa traction looks like. So it's not going to be exact, but at least something similar, and, and the colors match pretty well. Uh, but again, this is going to be a locomotive that we're going to have that's going to be able to fit a lot more tighter radius curves. Again, this is going to be available um, very shortly. Um, this is a $45 retail price locomotive, so very, very competitive. Uh, and also, Ken, I wanted to let you know uh, real quick before I move on here to a uh, couple of things that we um, currently have in stock is this is from Junpei. He wanted me to let you know that when he announced this on Instagram, that he was very upset that Trainwell did not uh, like and share the post. Oh, so, no. So to show his appreciation, he's going to fly by real quick. <laughs> very great. Oh, man. I, I'm very sorry, Junpei. I missed it. <laughs> it's okay you can make it up for him after this uh well, i i, I gotta tell video. our 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 marketing team to uh, uh get you in for for a little <laughs> photo shoot and extra street cred on the marketing side absolutely sorry oh about that God. i'm gonna make a note of that i, I gotta uh tell our guys to to get on that uh he's been planning this all day so i'm, I'm literally <laughs> writing that down junpei oh, photo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that no but, you're good and and i appreciate that but i did want to say back on that little locomotive yes you know, sir we we get a lot of comments that uh you know engine prices are going up uh trains are so expensive this is an affordable locomotive I, it it actually moves i i had yeah. a check on price uh you know when i when i saw it and i was like this can't be right. That's got a motor in it. And it's a very, yeah, it's a very affordable price. I mean, it, it, it's got one of our uh, signature cordless motors in there. It actually has pretty decent pull. We're recommending that modelers have that either have like our mixed hopper set or a small mixed freight train set, which we do offer too. But that'd be like perfect to pull with it. Yeah. I mean, the, the retail price on this is just so competitive. It's so great. I mean, especially for a model, you know, that's on a budget that just wants something to run, especially like a beginner. This is the perfect locomotive to have. Yeah, awesome. So, um, for the new announcements, that's pretty much it. I did, I did want to mention that we do still have, uh, for all the fans out there, we do still have the uh, some Anscale Twentieth Century Limiteds. Um, they've been selling like hotcakes. It's been crazy with, with this set. And I know, Ken, we I was on a on a past uh, show with you, and we were talking about this a little more in depth. And the buzz on that then was just as was just as big as it is now. I mean, we've been selling those really well. Um, so those are still available. Another um, item that we do still have that we just received here in the past week or two is the N-Scale SD70 ACE powered by our people unit. 
I'm going to uh, pull it up real quick. It is flickering again, so I shut it off. So this is the um, picture of it here. I also have the model right here. This has been, we have sold over 1,600 models wow. in the past two weeks. Wow. So this, is, so, this is selling so, so, so very quickly. We've had a lot of good responses to it. Uh, as you can see from the picture, uh, Japan did a really, really good job uh, with all the concept art. As you can see all the workers here. Japan did just an amazing job. So these are still available now for those that are looking to get it. This is still available with DCC and sound as well. The sound versions are going to take a little bit of time, um, but we are going to have those released here shortly. And the DCC versions are being shipped. Uh, actually, I just shipped some today, so they'll be shipping out now and uh, uh, a little bit later on next week as well. Very cool. Very nice. So that's all I really have for you guys tonight. So. All right. Very cool. Um, Alex. Yes, before, sir. Before you go, the uh, Amtrak HO scale baggage cars, are you, I don't know if you guys announced them or were considering announcing them. Yeah, so we did, we did announce them. We are going to do them. I don't have a lot of specific information on them yet. That was more or less just a preliminary announcement for them. We are going to be doing the HO scale uh, Viewliner 2 baggage cars. Um, anticipated right now will be probably towards the end of the year, but we really can't confirm that yet uh we're still in talks with the factory about all the minor details on that so but once we have more information we're hoping to have some within the next couple months we'll be sure to send out another announcement and i'll be doing an announcement video here probably next month i'll explain a little bit more on that as we get more information on it okay yeah the, uh, the Cato p42s i know were a big hit on my channel had over half a million views on that review yeah i think it's like one of the most reviewed or viewed reviews i have if i can say that slowly um, and then your N-scale stuff is just excellent, uh, too. They both are very uh, reliable and smooth drives and quiet. So, Yeah, thanks well, for thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, go ahead, James. Oh, I was just saying thanks for what you guys do. You make a quality product in HO and in. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, we are really excited, again, about the Viewliner 2, and we're excited for all the new products that will be coming out this year. And, again, we appreciate being on the show, guys. It's, it's been a lot of fun. Thank Look you for doing this again. Without a doubt. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate yep. it. No problem. And uh, we're going to try something new this show. And uh, we haven't done this before, but we have a very special company coming in, Classic Metalworks. Now, I, I, we haven't had them on before, but a lot of people are interested in detailing their layouts with little cars. And it, it's, it's a huge part of everybody's layout. Everybody has to have at least 40, 50 cars on the layout. And uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Classic Metalworks. How are you guys doing? Oh, let me unmute you. Hold on. There you go. Yeah, we're doing good. Thanks for having us on here. We're excited to show you guys what we got. And can you introduce yourself uh, to everyone out there? Yeah, hey, I am Chad. I'm the uh, marketing manager here at Round Two. So, and uh, this is Doug. Yep. Hey, hello, everybody. So, Doug's a member of our Classic Metalworks team. He's also our resident train chaser, and uh, he's a big asset when it comes to picking out what vehicles are, would be great on layouts and and all of that kind of stuff, and looking into licensing. So, I got Doug here to make sure that uh, I say everything right. <laughs> all right. So, so what do you guys have for us? Uh, we've got a lot of really cool stuff. We're kind of going to, uh, we'll go chronologically here. So we do a lot of, as you mentioned, accessories um, and vehicular stuff. Uh, so a lot of our newly available stuff um, that just came out, like just hit that we got, uh, some accessories. We have our Coca-Cola license. So this is our HO uh, 50s to 60s chest coolers, Coca-Cola chest coolers to put in a layout and kind of put outside of your shops and all of that stuff. Um, also our 1970s uh, Coca-Cola vending machines, these just hit uh, this month. So Coke's a license that we're really happy to get. And there's a lot of really great stuff that we've been able to put out with them. And so we're also doing uh, 50s to 60s candy machines uh, that are coming out for, the, for your layout. And of course, uh, 50s to 60s uh, cigarette machines too. So 
you, you got to have that realism when it's uh, 50s and 60s with all the uh, all the cigarettes and stuff. But we're um, also uh, have a lot of really cool stuff coming out in vehicular uh, this month or that just hit. Uh, one is our tooling for the 1955 Ford sedan. So this is a tool that's been put out before under Classic Metalworks. We have three new colors for it. Um, this first one here is in this blue color. Just a great, great looking uh, car for that, for the 50s era stuff. Uh, there's another variation here. Uh, that's the taxi cab version uh, of the 1955 Ford sedan that's coming out. And there's the other variation here. I believe that one is, uh, is that Coral, Doug? Yeah, yes. Coral, Coral Mist yeah. and Black. Yep. So that's for uh, also newly available that we just had coming out. Um, we started on these 41 to 46 Chevy fire trucks that we've been working on. So uh, it's got that fire truck back end to put into your layout there. There's a red variation. Um yep. Sorry to cut you guys off. Can you also talk the uh, each scale when you guys show a product? Yeah, and these, these are of, all HO. Uh, this is a lot our, of people our most are asking HO about scales. Yeah, scale. They they do do O scale, HO, and N scale. Yeah. Uh, they were just showing the HO scale product just to clarify for the comments there. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, these are all HO. So. Um, yeah, those are the 41 to 46 Chevy fire trucks. And then the next one that we've done, uh, we have an HO and N both. And that is our new 57 Chevy septic trucks, which are uh, are really neat. So there's a look at the HO one here in uh, silver and beige for that. Smith service. And, uh, yeah, there's a Smith service for the other variation for uh, for the septic trucks. A lot of different ones you can do to put into your layout. And for the N-scale modeler? There's those smaller versions there. We usually do our N-scales in two packs um, for those. And there's a look at N-scale for that other uh, variation there. And there's kind of like, uh, we have been expanding a little more too to do uh, do some building stuff that we hadn't hadn't tried yet and utilize some of our uh, some of our really good licenses. So we have some stuff that's on the water. This is a Coca-Cola bottling plant in HO scale that is coming out. So this should be hitting, uh, we expect it to, to be in February, sometime in February for it to come in. So it's uh, fully detailed, uh, already painted and, and all of that stuff for the bottling plant. And we also have this water tower, which is uh, comes with a light on that. It's also a Coca-Cola water tower. So you can put that on top of the bottling plant. You can put it on top of any other building that you have uh, to, to throw on there. And then, uh, like I said, lights up and all of that stuff. And uh, we, we do a lot with gasoline licenses too, because part of uh, what we do in, in Diecast also, we have a lot of gasoline licenses. So this is our HO scale Gulf service station that's coming out next month. So again, already pre-detailed and ready to go um, to throw onto your layout. And then we do have, um, that's everything kind of for February. We got a little more stuff coming too, but that's the main stuff we wanted to show for that. Uh, April releases, we have a lot of really exciting stuff coming for April. Uh, one of those is a brand new tool for us. This is our 1973 Chevy square body pickup truck. So this is the first release that we've ever done for this 73 pickup. And kind of what we did with this, it's a truck that you see all the time in farms or, or in rural areas that'll be great on a layout. And the way that we tool a lot of these, um, this truck in particular, you can do, there's three different grills we did for the front of it. We have a fleet side bed, we have a step side bed. Uh, these first three colors in light blue and red and yellow. And uh, different grills on the front end let us do years all the way from 1973 to 1979 and all different kinds of deco work trucks, all of that stuff. So we'll have a lot of different variations coming out for these trucks to put in your layout. So they're not all looking the same. And we also have um, another new tool that we worked on. We've done one release for this one. Uh, we have the 1974, 75 and 76. Buick Estate Wagon. So we've done one release of those. These are in HO and N scale both. So you're looking at our HO scale versions now. Uh, this is the first time we've done the 1976. So this has a different front end. 
than the one release we did for the 1974. Uh, it's a great vehicle, especially for layouts, just because it's everything that everybody thinks of when they grew up, you know, in the 70s, riding in these with their parents and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, our previous release, we did wood paneling on the side for the 74. These are kind of uh, uh, more solid color. So we've got another, a lot of really neat variations that we can do with that. And also in that April release, we will have this 1936 Ford sedan. Uh, this one is not a new tool. It's a tool that's been done before uh, by Classic Metalworks, but these are three new uh, liveries or decos that we've done. So we've got a black one, a burgundy one, and then the uh, the yellow cab company version. And they have a, really, a lot of really awesome detail that we pride ourselves on. Uh, we're like vehicular maniacs here. So we spend a lot of time looking into the detail for that. So it's got kind of matte roofs and all of that to uh, get, give it the soft top look um, up on the top there where the top slid back on those uh, 36 Ford sedans. And we also have another big announcement. I know we're kind of running through a lot pretty fast here, but we have, uh, we've acquired some new licenses as well that we kind of have yet to announce with some pretty big, beer brands. So we recently have acquired Miller High Life, uh, Coors Banquet, Hams, and Leinenkugel. So I know some of you guys were talking about you're out of Milwaukee, so I'm sure you'll love the, uh, the Leinenkugel stuff that we've got coming out. So we have a sneak peek for 2021. This is mid-year release deco that we'll be doing. Uh, these aren't even on our price list yet, so it's kind of the first time anybody's been able to see these. Uh, the first one we're going to do is this 55 to 57 Chevy reefer truck. And this is the Miller High Life variation of it. So it's got the, uh, the cooled uh, reefer conditioning unit on the top of it and the vintage uh, Miller High Life look in that 55 to 57. Uh, also, we'll be doing the Line and Kugels version of it for the 55 to 57. And again, just those great looking vintage line and Kugels graphics for that. And uh, we will be doing with our Coors license, actually a 1954 International. Uh, this is an R190 flatbed. So we're with this one, it's a little bit different. We went Coors uh, malted milk, actually, uh, for this 54. So this one, the flatbed will come with 55 gallon drums on it with all the Coors malted milk logos on them. And again, just great stuff to put in the layout. We'll be kind of utilizing these licenses a lot like how we do Coca-Cola too, where we can do a lot of different really neat stuff with them. So we're super excited about those coming out. Uh, another big thing that we have coming out are our gasoline tanker trucks. And again, we're utilizing a lot of our gas licenses that we have. So this is the 1960 Ford uh, F500. This is the Chevron gasoline version. If you guys can see there and that old school uh, 1960s Chevron logos. And we also have done Texaco gasoline, just a great looking tanker truck for that one coming out. And to go with our service station, we will have a, uh, a golf version of that as well, golf gasoline version of that in the uh, orange and black. So and these will also be available in N scale also. Yep. The, the, these are HO for uh, the layouts, but the N scale will be very similar, uh, very similar deco for those variations of it. Uh, also, we last year came out with our uh, bottle truck. So this is the 41 to 46 Chevy bottle truck. We did a Coca-Cola version a while back. I believe was the first one red, Doug? Or we'll yes. see. Yes. We did a red Coca-Cola version. So this is the vintage yellow and red Coca-Cola bottle truck. So the back end bottle truck was new tooling from last year. We will have that coming out as part of the 2021 mid-year plan. And uh, Kool-Aid. So this is our Kool-Aid license that we're working with. Um, this is actually Kool-Aid carbonated soda beverages, which was something that was done way back in the day, which I wasn't even aware of until we started looking into it. So I thought it was we thought it was very exciting to kind of do something a little different and that, that throwback with all that old Kool-Aid stuff. Um, so that's pretty much all the stuff that we've got right now coming out. We have, we do have more 
um, more, but we kind of wanted to just touch on the highlights and run, run through kind of the big licenses and the other big stuff uh, that we're working on. So we'll have a lot more stuff that we'll be announcing if you go on round2corp.com and check out our site and, and all of that. But it's a ton of stuff. We're really, really excited about it. And Sure. <laughs> I got some questions for you guys. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. The first one is, where are you guys uh, based out of? We are in South Bend, Indiana. Okay, I'm I'm originally from Indiana. That's cool. I'm yep, from yeah, that's where I'm from uh, uh, Central Indiana, but uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then uh, my second question is: Have you considered uh, ever doing 187 um, air aircraft? Because there's a huge um, lack of that in in the hobby, and a lot of people always bother me about it. So we we have not um, at this point, but. Obviously, yeah, that's something that we could potentially look at doing. Yes. Okay. And then the last question is for the uh, beer line of products. Have you thought about doing Paps Blue Ribbon and Old Milwaukee, making it half the price and making it taste bad? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'd, it'd be nice if it was all uh, all kind of grouped in together like that, or you know, maybe you try, if you could charge half for uh, for PBR stuff, right? But uh, that would you know, actually we, we, uh, really. Kind of, Okay. That would be a funny marketing, like scheme. Actually, that yeah. like you do certain beers like half price and like the premium beers higher. That would be really funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so keep, keep them down. Yeah, it, it kind of worked out well where we uh, those beer brands kind of were all all held by the same uh, the same license. So we were able to kind of get a get some really cool licenses all together in in one licensing contract and. So there's a lot of really cool stuff we can we can do with them. So uh, I don't know. We're we're excited. Well, definitely, if the beer stuff goes well, um, you know, it's it's something that we can always look into too. Sure. Well, that airplane idea is a freebie for you guys. So, well, uh, we appreciate it. Great, thanks. <laughs> they're they're all freebies, right? You hear a thousand different ideas at every show. So oh, I just yeah. wanted to make yeah. sure I gave you one so you felt like you're actually at a train show. <laughs> we like all the ideas. I mean, it's we get a lot of great ones. That's good. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. And we sell uh, the the amount of cars that we go through of your company is uh, unbelievable. It's phenomenal. I like to to claim myself as Crazy Ken uh, because of selling your little uh, classic metalworks uh, vehicles. But uh, that's ne neither here or there. But <laughs> it's good thank to hear. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. The, thank you guys very much. Appreciate uh, you stopping on, and uh, it was a good learning experience, including myself. I, I, it was good to see those uh, structures. So, uh, yeah, great. Th thank yeah. you for having us. We're, yeah, we're really excited about coming on here, so we we really appreciate it. Yeah, sure do. Thank, thank you guys. Appreciate thank it. You. And uh, so, so great accessories for the layout. And uh, we're gonna now go to. Ron from Intermountain Railway, and let me just unmute you. I know you've been uh, pa patiently waiting. And uh, how you doing, Ron? I'm doing fantastic. Um, yeah, thanks for the introduction, and thanks for uh, including us in the show. Uh, it's easy to be patient when there's so much uh, great new product coming out, and we get a chance to hear from all these manufacturers. So this is an awesome venue, you know, and in lieu of face-to-face -face train shows. This is fantastic. I appreciate you guys doing this. So no, um, yeah. And so Intermountain has a bunch of great new announcements. Um, we'll keep it pretty brief because I know it's getting late, especially out on the, on the East coast with you guys. So, um, but we have uh, in the last 18 months, our supply chain of our, of our three suppliers has really um, come along and developed nicely and are doing some good capacity and great high quality stuff. So we've gotten in some really good new product and we've got a bunch more on the way and a bunch more in the works. So let me get into a couple that I'm really excited about. First off, um, you know, an American staple of, uh, of grain cars, uh, our HO scale 4750 cubic foot three bay hopper. Um, we've got uh, a new run of these that just came in a couple weeks ago and we've been filling orders. They're selling fantastic. You know, some of the awesome features about this car are the etched stainless steel see-through running board. I'll hold it up to the camera so you guys can get a real good look at it. It's uh, it's stainless steel, uh, very thin, and it's chem etched, so done well. It's also got fantastic combination of 
injection molded uh, plastic parts that are that are very finely detailed, you know, including all the brake uh, cylinders and the brake wheel, uh, some of the other detail, um, along with some etched metal etched metal parts um, that go on the ends um, and stirrups, and then some uh, wire formed detail. So all, you know that combination keeps this as prototypically accurate as we can for an HO scale car. So one of our little uh, famous little cars that um, you see all over the, uh, the country and especially across the Midwest. Um, this particular production run um, includes obviously the, uh, the famous uh, Burlington Northern paint scheme along with 18 additional paint schemes. Uh, I'll run through the list real quick for you. Uh, Kansas City Southern, CSX, Illinois Central Gulf, Grain Train, BNSF, Clem Co-op, Santa Fe, uh, AM Grain Express, the UP Bicentennial Red, White, and Blue car, and the State Line Elevator cars are all included. And each one of these uh, will have uh, six car numbers included with them as well. So a really good mix of, uh, of grain cars coming down the pipe, and we're shipping those right now. So um, if, if uh, our customers out there don't have orders in yet, they need to place orders with Ken on Train World or one of our other dealers, um, and to, to look at all the paint schemes that we have available, just jump on the uh, irctrains.com website. Um, so uh, that's an exciting uh, freight car that we got coming in. And this one's been a long time coming, but we're very, very excited about um, our next production run that is already on the water, uh, on the way from uh, overseas. And this is the uh, HO scale tier four locomotive. Um, we've We've done a run of these uh, in the past, and it's been a while since we've had them back in stock. They're great runners. They're fantastic detail. Uh, some of the features here, we've got five uh, road names available, and uh, it's Union Pacific in this uh, fantastic patriotic paint scheme with the red, white, and blue American flag uh, proudly flying. Uh, Canadian National, BNSF, Norfolk Southern, and CSX are all in this release. And again, those are on the water and will be here very, very shortly. A matter of uh, days, we'll be shipping in February. Um, let's see. We've retooled the diagonal exhaust, which is uh, which is an awesome feature. I don't know if you can how well you can see it with the camera, but that's tooled up specific to be accurate per per the road name. Okay. There's uh, multiple types of uh, exhaust housing. Um, Road numbers, uh, the the antennas are specific and again, tooled up to be accurate for the road. I don't know if I can get you in focus there or not, but a bunch of really great detail on the top of that locomotive as well. Um, of course, we have the etched uh, stainless steel uh, see-through grills. Um, and there's a number of panels all over this locomotive that have the etched metal parts. Um, and then, of course, the ESU V5 sound decoder has an option, you know, to have sound or non-sound uh, DCC. Um, the, uh, and, the, yeah, the, go ahead. You got a, you got uh, a question. Sorry. No, no. Sorry to interrupt. But this is a good chance for customers to, to grab this because the first time you guys came out with it, it was hot as a pistol. I mean, everybody was uh, jumping on it, and I think James even did some videos on it. And uh, James did a great review on it. James did a great review on this. You remember what ep what episode that was, James? Oh, I don't know. We're up to several hundred now. I tell you one thing yeah. though. One thing that brings a tear to my eye is those tinted windows because you guys actually listened to. I don't know if it was just me, but I I brought up the fact that. You know, a lot of modelers wanted tinted windows because that's what's on the real thing. And you guys did that and listened to those folks. So, well, yeah. we take input very seriously uh, from the modeling community and input coming from you, James, we take very, very seriously. So you had some significant input into that decision, along with several other things that you recommended. And uh, and we love that input and we take it seriously and we we do everything we can to make these models as good as we as we can possibly produce them. This is a great runner too, by the way. It's it's and uh, a lot of different uh, lighting features as well that are accurate, uh, specific to each road. So uh, really yeah. cool locomotive. 
Yeah, James, I remember that video that you did and uh, the the amount of cars that it pulled. And, and um, Ron, I think you guys did also a, a, another video as well on it. And right. the, the the pulling power. And I, I, I heard people just talking about how good that motor is. And, you, yeah. you, you know, usually people say, oh, that's a nice model. That's a nice model. But you don't hear, wow, that motor <laughs> is amazing. Yeah. But yeah. uh, it, it, you really did a fantastic job on this engine. So really yeah. uh, great that you guys are coming out with it again for uh, the chance that people missed out the first batch. Well, we're very excited about it, and and we've got you know we got some uh, we got some air freighted samples in, and this this one goes on my desk, <laughs> so I got mine already because I know that they're going to go pretty quick. But and I know you'll do well with them again, Ken. You always do. So um, and uh, the. Intermountain tier uh, four videos have a total. I've done three different videos. They've got a total of over a hundred thousand views uh, because people are just so excited about that product and and what you guys bring to the table with that. So it's really great. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. We and appreciate it. The BNS paint uh, BNSF paint scheme too is just gorgeous on that. So. Yep and so and all all good winners so it's gonna be yeah uh, and i wish it fun. i wish i had one of each paint scheme here to show you but i only brought the uh the up here tonight but um you'll see them soon they'll and uh, they'll be on our website and and of course ken will have them in the store and uh, and promoting them as well so um okay well moving along we've got um we've got another run of ho scale auto racks that are also shipped and on the water uh these seem to sell out uh as fast as we can get them produced so this is the second run in a short period of months um this production run uh will include the following paint schemes uh and actually i guess i should for your viewers you guys are very familiar with this but this one's kind of becoming famous and you can see the see-through quality of these etched stainless steel metal walks just amazing uh, for photography or for putting silhouettes in the cars. The doors uh, operate, so you can uh, model these open or closed. Um, and again, tons of great detail. You can, you can get a look there. Um, the paint schemes that are going to be available on those auto racks are uh, two, two different schemes in the Union Pacific, Grand Trunk Western, Southern, uh, Western Pacific, Conrail, Norfolk Southern, BNSF. CSX, and then uh, the, the north and south of, of the continent. I'll, I'll try to get this right. Tran Transportación Ferroviaria Mexicano <laughs> and CP Rail. So uh, we try to get, you know, regional representation for everywhere these babies run and, and all the roads that, uh, you know, that own these and painted them up in nice paint schemes. And you see all these all over the country. So bi-level auto rack. And, uh, and those are on the way in. Uh, they're not all sold out yet, but they're going quick. And uh, Ken, I know you've had some experience with these, some great experience with these on the retail side as well. You want to tell us about that? Uh, man, the, the first batch was crazy. And, you know, it, it's amazing because other companies do make, you know, similar product. And it, when, when I first ordered, I, I said, you know, another order rack. But when people saw the see-through and you know the the details that you put in, people basically threw the the, the <laughs> other manufacturers out or put it up on eBay, and they had to grab yours. It, it was uh, unbelievable. And James, I'm sure you could attest to the quality. And uh, Ron, just to let you know, the the comments that are rolling in for your product, product uh, is uh, phenomenal. So it's a okay. uh, team on that. All right. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Well, we appreciate all the all the kind words, and uh, you know, our goal is to give uh, is to give our modelers the the best product possible for the greatest value, and uh, you know, guys like you guys help us get the word out, and obviously through your retail channels, Ken, you help us get the product into the hands of your customers at the best possible price, and uh, we'll just we'll just keep manufacturing them and and try to produce the best value on the market that we can. So uh, moving on, we got a couple more things I wanted to touch on today. Um, 
we we have uh, I don't have a sample of it here, but we have a general service gondola that we're going to be having uh, come in that is in the shipment with the auto racks. So we'll have those available here within a, a few weeks as well. Um, we have let's see HO scale cylindrical hoppers, our colorful grain hoppers that everybody's familiar with. A lot of the Canadian uh, paint schemes and North American paint schemes. Um, let's see. We have uh, some end scale products as well. Uh, you guys have heard me talk a little bit about this awesome little unit. This is the same bi-level auto rack. And we've partnered with uh, our friend Matt with Fox Valley Models. And we're proud to bring this out. These are in production or they're getting ready to go in production. They're not in production yet. We're still taking advanced reservations and we're, and we're getting them ramped up. Uh, we'll start production and you can see that's got the see-through etched metal as well and it's exquisite for HO it's even more impressive in end scale so again beautiful detail all around the entire car same paint schemes all artwork is prototypically accurate so that's another great product uh, thanks to Matt at Fox Valley for helping us make that happen for all of our wonderful end scale customers out there as well um, Speaking of N-Scale, we've got the uh, N-Scale 5161 uh, Trinity Hoppers. We've got also at N-Scale the, the uh, N-Scale 4750 cubic foot three bay hopper that um, will have also the etched metal running board on it as well, along with some great fine detail. Um, and then, uh, so any questions about those N-Scale products, guys? Uh, there, there were two people kept on phone, and I'm not sure if you know offhand. If not, maybe a team uh, address later on. But the they, they just wanted an update on the HO Trinity Hopper and also an N scale cab forward. Yep. So we we have both of those in the schedule, and I don't have any uh, any tentative dates yet for that. But I, I will. Uh, We'll review those comments and we'll get together with our marketing team and see if we can answer those um, sometime soon. Cool. Uh, they're not imminent, but uh, they are on the list. Um, so I got two other things I wanted to touch on and you're gonna be real excited about this one too, because Intermountain has another HO scale locomotive that we'd like to, uh, to unveil that's oh, oh. in production and we'll be coming down the pipe very soon. And I know we had some, uh, a couple other announcements about uh, Jeep products. We've got an HO scale uh, GP locomotive. It's the Jeep 16. And I don't know if you're familiar with this Intermountain product, but this is one of the most exquisite HO models that Intermountain's ever produced along with that tier four. And it's just fantastic. It's got all the prototypically accurate detail on it. Again, the combination of finely detailed injection molded plastic along with etched stainless steel um, grills and vents and louvers um, with wire form detail where it's appropriate. For instance, on the end grabs, uh, let's see if I can give you a good look at those end grabs. Um, but with all the, the accurate uh, lighting features, ditch lights, uh, just a beautiful model start to finish. So that one also will be released in a bunch of paint schemes. We've got 16 paint schemes scheduled. I don't have that full list with me right now, but I wanted to show you at least one of these uh, production samples that we've got. So, okay. So we're really excited to be back uh, in the locomotive business and having product that's getting produced and, and on the water and soon to be out the door. We'll have uh, in-scale locomotive announcements coming up a little later in the year. And then uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is, is more of a reminder to you all that, you know, nothing runs great unless it's got a good foundation. And, and it all starts with, with great uh, wheel sets. And I wanted to mention that Intermountain has for years had a, a fantastic precision brass wheel set product line. Uh, N scale, HO scale, and O scale. I don't have a third hand right now, but we have O scale product line as well. Well, let me grab one here. We gotta, we gotta show you that we got all three 
And these, these are the best in the business. They run fantastic. They're precision. Uh, they're precision machined and they are uh, fantastic. And if you want to pull a lot of cars and you want smooth running uh, freight trains, it all starts with those intermountain wheels. So, um, and I know that, you know, Ken and, and the rest of our dealers carry a good inventory. And we have, uh, in the past, we've had trouble keeping them in stock because people do buy them and they buy a lot of them when they buy them because a lot of times they'll, they'll change out everything on the layout and upgrade their, uh, their freight cars. So, uh, and we have solved that uh, pipeline problem and, and uh, those wheel sets will be in stock and we have a number of different types for each scale as well. So um, I don't want to keep us all up too late and I have my bowling league that starts here in a couple hours too, by the way. So sorry about that. <laughs> so, I, I on hey, Ron, you're, you're getting a lot of wheel comments. Everybody's saying your wheels are the best. <laughs> oh, great, great. Well, we appreciate that, and and uh, and we do believe that you know that it all starts with a fantastic foundation. So, um, but but with that, um, I really want to express gratitude on behalf of all of us manufacturers that involved that were involved tonight. You know, to you know, Ken, you and James both. Um, you guys do so much for the hobby. And, you know, obviously there's mutual benefit, but I know you have a love for not only the product lines, but for the people involved and for the hobby in general. And everything you do helps us be a stronger industry and a stronger hobby. And it's all geared toward, you know, giving uh, the consumers uh, what they want and what they need for their home layouts and their contests and their modeling uh, hobbies and, and everything that goes along with it. So we, we sure appreciate you guys. That's awesome, Ron. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Right. And uh, I know James has a healthy uh, intermountain uh, batch of all uh, all your stuff on his layout and all all great product. And even your freight cars and rolling stock, Ron. Just uh, they're not overpriced. You know, they're they're affordable, but they're quality. And I I think you you guys hit like a, a real good you know, uh, a niche on the market where um, you, you find a home where it, it's great quality at an affordable price and you really do great things. And those end scale auto racks are, you know, I, I don't think people really understand until they get them on the layout and, you know, it, they're going to go like crazy, just like the first HO batch, you know, it was like a HO auto rack and then they see them and it's like, wow, a HO auto rack. So we're, we're excited for those. Yeah, the product speaks for itself, but it's great to uh, to have you guys help us get the word out to everybody because a lot of people would miss out if it if it weren't for you guys and and shows like this to you know to get the word out on all these great new products that are coming out from all the manufacturers. So it's good yeah. stuff. And and everybody's uh, wishing you a good bowl, Ron. So well, thank you. They, they want you to bowl a three hundred. <laughs> I will do the best I can. <laughs> I certainly will. James, do you bowl? I do, but it uh, looks a little bit like a controlled crash every time I go down the line. <laughs> Very cool. Well, uh, thank thank you for uh, staying up, Ron. We appreciate it. And I'm, uh, I wish you the best in, in your bowling league tonight and have fun. Okay. And uh, we're, we're excited about the new product coming out and we'll uh, continue to do our best. Okay. Thanks again and, and good night to everybody. Good night. Thank you, Ron. And just so everybody knows in the comments section, I've, we're going to still cover Broadway Limited, so don't go yet. I see a lot of people signing off. Yep. And uh, so, so Ken, uh, we're not sure what happened with Ken tonight, and uh, we're going to bust his shops tomorrow. And everybody could comment and email, ask where Ken is, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give a shout out to Ken. So he owes us on this one. But James is actually going to cover Ken tonight. And uh, he'll, I guess, go over some product on uh, what you think is cool from Broadway. Well, first, uh, Ken Jr., I want to tell you a little backstory. It's not a train show without me covering for Ken Silvestri because <laughs> I go to a lot of train shows, as you know, and sometimes I see Ken by himself and, you know, he's doing a little dance. I'm like, hey, Ken, you need a break? So... <laughs> So I'll usually sit in for Ken at his booth. So this isn't too much different uh, from sitting in for Ken Silvestri at his booth on occasion. 
and pulling up stuff on my phone to answer questions for people that have Broadway limited questions. Now, I don't have a head of silver hair. I don't have a head of hair at all. Um, so what I will do is just talk about some Broadway limited products and luck would have it that's sitting on my layout right now is one of their <clears throat> most recent releases. It's the Chesapeake and Ohio L1. And this is totally unplanned because we, we did think that Ken would be here tonight, but um, the L1 is a brass hybrid locomotive. And one thing I do like about Broadway Limited is they they are very innovative. Um, you can see, you know, just the back end detail there, the conduit going to the tail light and things like that. I won't go into the full review because there's a review of this locomotive on my channel right now. Um, but the brass hybrid series is, is mostly brass with just a few pieces of uh, other detailed parts at a, at a really good price compared to what you see in the brass market. And the L1 was produced in the brass market, but you're looking at paying three to five times the amount for the full brass version. And, and this comes with ECC and sound. They also have Paragon 3, which is a kind of like a, re a receiver and a subwoofer and a transmitter on the decoder to give you like a track side feel with the bass. So it's a, that subwoofer is kicking out bass. You can control all of that with configuration variables. And you kind of feel the rumble of the locomotive as it goes by your you at the layout. And then if the receiver is in a certain spot, it'll kind of fade out and back in. So it's pretty cool uh, features from Broadway Limited. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you don't have to see my ugly bald head here. Uh, let's see here. And James, while you do that, I'm just going to take a look at a, uh, a, a invoice of what's coming in from Broadway uh, while you share your screen. This way, uh, people know what's, I guess, shipping. Okay, keep an eye on my screen, too, because I don't know. I think it should show okay, but I don't know if I'm supposed to click share audio or not. Mm, I'll skip that. Let's see. Okay, so can you see my screen okay? Yeah. It's like a little vortex there for a second. But So this is just Broadway Limited's website, and they do have an in-stock list you can always go to which is up at the top and a delivery schedule. Uh, we talked about the L1 Hudson, which just delivered uh, early this month, late late last month. But they've also got uh, P70 Pennsylvania passenger cars, you know, very, very well done passenger cars, lit. Uh, yeah. runners. The P70s are actually going to be shipping to uh, dealers, uh, hopefully maybe this week or next week. So um, yeah. those are uh, in the pipeline for a new arrival. And you can get them in a two pack or a single car. So that's that's always good. Uh, it gives you a variation. Now they've got in scale stuff too, including the EMD SD70 ACE and the George Bush 4141 scheme. That's the presidential library. Also, you know, got a lot of attention lately from the funeral of George H.W. Bush, because uh, it was lead in the funeral train. And they've also got other schemes, including BHP, BNSF, Canadian National, CSX. The EMD demo units are, are nice, and uh, UP flag scheme. But here's some, some of the more rarer schemes uh, that people may not know about, is the Kansas City Southern, Veterans Day unit. They're going to make that an in scale. Now, a little backstory on this unit from Broadway Chesapeake and Ohio Heritage unit. It, a couple of taggers went and took a CSX locomotive, and they, in the middle of the night, they patched Chesapeake and Ohio on the side and on the nose uh, to make it like a heritage unit. So you know, I approve of that type of graffiti because I thought it was pretty neat. Um, so they're going to recreate that unit in in scale and S on the SD70 ACE as well. And just, you know, the regular UP and then we powered by our people, which is a UP uh, heritage scheme or not a heritage scheme, but a commemorative unit that really salutes their, their staff. 
So they're going to be doing that unit as well and then scale. And all those units come with a Paragon 3, which is that DCC system I was telling you about that you can have the trackside experience with the subwoofer if you wish, or it'll run on DC or DCC as well. They're even doing some of the Norfolk Southern Heritage units, including New York Central, Reading. Um, they're doing Erie, Lackawanna, Penn Central, and then some of the UP Heritage, including Katy, uh, Western Pacific, which is one of my favorite, as you see there. And they're doing the Mopac Heritage unit as well. So all of these units are in scale SD70 ACEs for those just kind of joining us, uh, coming out from Broadway Limited. Then you've got Norfolk and Western Class A locomotives, probably most famously number 1218. They're reproducing. Those are coming up very shortly. And again, with Paragon 3. So that's showing 1214, but the scheme... Uh, this particular number, if you were to order it from Train World, that would be 1218. So they've got some of the photos just kind of giving you an idea what they look like. And then you've got tank cars. There's a 280 consolidation, GD1s. There's Ken Sylvester. You guys get to see him. There he is. <laughs> he's know, more famous than me, too, on YouTube. Ken's more famous than everybody. You know? <laughs> Yeah, he gets a he has a line of groupies every time I see him at a train show. And then I think this is an this might be an all new announcement, the Paragon 3 ATSF 282 locomotive. But again, uh, that's going to be later in May. They're still uh, accepting pre-orders in that, and Train World's a great dealer for Broadway, so you can get all your products there, of course, or your favorite um, hobby shop. So that kind of covers Broadway. One other thing I want to mention about their products is if you've missed out on something, you can go to this in stock list. You can download the file and see what's still in stock. You know, more often than not, and I actually pay attention to this because sometimes I'm playing from behind on the products. Um, you can see stuff that's already released, they still have in stock, which means you can still get it uh, from your favorite dealer, even if your dealer doesn't have it in stock. It's almost like a, being able to pre-order after the fact. So you can always uh, contact your dealer and be like, hey, can you get me this? I see it's still in stock at Broadway as of this date or whatever. So that's just a pointer. Let me stop screen sharing before we end up in the, some sort of black hole here. Very good recap of Ken Silvestri, James. And uh, I seriously, I hope Ken is uh, well and everyone's safe. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to him tonight, but uh, I do know what one time we 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 were gonna have him to the the Trainland store retail store, and it, this was like maybe five years. Ken, Ken and us go way 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 back. So he he was gonna supposed to come in, fly in from Florida, and he tells me, Ken, I can't come down. It's snowing. I go, it's. It, you're from Florida. It's not snowing in Florida. <laughs> and he goes, no, I had to do a stopover in Georgia and it's snowing in Georgia and they canceled all the flights. So who knows? It may be another Ken story. So we'll see. <laughs> you guys are the two most famous Kens in the whole hobby. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the only two Kens in the hobby. But uh, And last show from the Train World Mall, he did have breaking, breaking news that Amazon was buying Broadway, but... Uh, I, I, I think that was a, another Ken uh, uh, little twist. But um, but seriously, hope all is well. But uh, that was a good recap, recap James. But, um, well, I, this was a great week, everyone. And we really appreciate seeing the amount of views. Um, just tremendous throughout all three shows. And uh, even tonight, the, even now, just the amount of views watching is just incredible. So, uh it really means the world to us and all the manufacturers involved. And, you know, thank you to all the manufacturers. And Ron, you're, you're still hanging tonight. Um, everybody left tonight early. Uh, but uh, it, we really appreciate them taking the time and talking about their products. And uh, I, I know this virtual train show is not here to replace any physical train show. And we're not trying to do that. We're just trying to have something uh, 
for the time being because I know a lot of people are stuck at home or you know on the front front lines and you know in a stressful situation. So um, you know our thoughts and prayers to everyone dealing with this COVID situation. But uh, you know hopefully this gives you some entertainment for the week, and we really appreciate everyone watching. Uh, James, thank you so much for being a lovely co-host and uh for for putting in the model railroader aspect of the uh the train reviews as always so we really appreciate that and yeah, uh, uh, it's been a great show and i know it's not a competition but i think ken you have the record uh, especially if you take your statistics and mine for the most viewed virtual shows by far um, and it's really a testament to all the work you put in and the manufacturers that have the patience to come on here and hang out with us. Um, but I think it's it's a good thing to have, like you said, but we do look forward to getting back to regular shows as well. With, without a doubt, James. And, uh, you know, it, everybody looks forward to your uh, recap videos of the train shows. So hopefully this, uh, you know, is just a little something but thank you everyone all your products you can find at trainworld.com shop online 24 7. thank you so much and we do have more upcoming events so always stay tuned like us on facebook and instagram uh we do have a lionel event coming up uh a bachman thomas event coming up and uh more to come so stay tuned thank you everyone Thank you, James. Thank you, Ron. And uh, have a good night, everybody. And thank you, everybody. Yeah, Ron. I'll, uh, I can bowl 300 if you give me 40 frames. <laughs> you got it, man. You're always welcome. <laughs> All right. Good Take night, care. guys. Good night.